shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the continuing introduction to 3D printing for modelers. In this installment, we're going to talk about printers and resin, and basically what to look for if you are in the market. So let's start with printers. There are a lot of resin 3D printers out there to choose from. There are multiple companies, multiple models, and it can get a bit overwhelming. Basically, I think it comes down to three things. Build volume, resolution, and screen type. Build volume is pretty much, I think, what you should use to kind of winnow the field. And this is entirely based on what you are planning to print. If you're mostly planning to print, you know, miniatures and smaller things like accessories for model kits. So Sherman light guards or missiles or pylons or cockpit details, things like that. You don't necessarily need a huge build volume. And so something like a Frozen Sonic Mini 4K or an AnyCubic Photon would work just fine. I mean, they have basically about like, I think it's like a three by five, maybe a four by six build area. So it's not huge, uh, but for smaller things, it's totally sufficient. If you want to print larger things like a TIE Interceptor or, you know, other sort of vehicle shaped objects, then you need a larger build volume or else you're going to be in for a world of pain and you're going to be severely limited in what you can do because you will either have to print smaller scales or you will have to slice things up, which is not fun because it introduces fit challenges. So basically, yeah, you have the smaller ones like, you know, the Sonic Mini 4K and uh, the Elegoo Mars, the AnyCubic Photon, etc. You also have the larger build volume ones. Uh, I believe any cubic is called the Photon X. Uh, the one I have is the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. Elegoo has the, has the uh, Saturn now, which is their large volume printer. So I would recommend think carefully about what you want to print. And if you want larger things like actual kits to print, go with the larger build volume ones. Now, granted, they are more expensive. Uh, Again, just it's all based on what fits your desires for printing. The other two things worth considering, resolution and screen type, basically help you separate out what you can choose or what you should go for. So in terms of print resolution, all the manufacturers out there are throwing around terms like 2K and 4K, but they are very much misnomers because just like TVs, Resolution is dependent on screen size. And so if they say it's 4K, that's great. But if the 4K screen is twice as large as another 4K screen, the resolution is like half as much, right? And so the, you know, for example, the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K is not as sharp as the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. So you really have to look at essentially what their resolution rating is in microns. And with something like the Mighty, it's around 56, I think. Um, and the Mini is substantially tighter. So that is really worth looking at as you are shopping and thinking about what sort of resolution do you need. Now, if you just want to dip your toes into things and just see how this shit works in general... You can pick up a 2K printer for a lot less, and I think from that standpoint, it would be the economical choice, uh, with the obvious caveat that none of these are economical choices. This is not something you do to save money. Uh, you have to kind of accept and admit up front, this is going to cost a bit. Uh, you know, it's still not super expensive in the grand scheme of things, but it's not cheap either. So... Yeah, I mean, I basically, when I was shopping for mine, I went for 4K. And I'm happy with that choice. But, you know, again, it's all dependent on what you need. In terms of screen technology, the big advancement that's happened recently is the introduction of monochrome screens, which basically just one light color. And it's the exact wavelength for UV, you know, all that stuff. What they do, though, is what's important. So a regular LCD screen on a regular resin 3D printer has a cure time on your average resin of about eight seconds. A mono screen 
has a cure time of around two to three seconds. So you do the math over 4,000 layers and you're gonna get much faster prints. That's basically the utility of that. So that's awesome, that's great. It also helps with the longevity of the printer itself because if it's only exposing things for two seconds at a time and it has a, you know, that screen has a lifespan of 2,000 hours or whatever, there you go. You're gonna save hours of life on the printer every time you print something. So I would definitely recommend going for a mono screen if at all possible. Now the two printers that I have, I have a Frozen Sonic Mini 4K and a Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. And they are both 4K printers, they are both mono printers. Um, you know, the Mini can print tighter details, but it again has a limited build volume. And honestly, like these wings were printed up on the Mighty and they look really good. So, you know, if you're worried about detail not holding up on a larger printer, on a larger printer, then you don't really need to. Um, yeah. <laughs> as far as what I would recommend, I mean, honestly, I bought the Frozen printers, so I would recommend them. Uh, the Elegoo printers also have a very fearsome reputation. I would have bought the Elegoo Saturn, but I could not find one anywhere when I was looking. So the Mighty was basically an equally as good choice. Uh, you will find, though, that these printers are starting to get sort of like a Nikon, Canon, Ford, Chevy type thing going on where there are certain camps that actively dislike certain brands. Honestly, in my opinion, they're all using basically the same technology. They're all basically the same thing. It's just pick your poison. Some of them have slightly better features, slightly different customer service, whatever. Uh, but basically, yeah, I would recommend that you focus first on build volume. You know, what do you want to print and consider that first and foremost, then how important is resolution to you. And if you can swing it, go for a mono screen. That's essentially my shopping advice. In terms of resins, uh, I'm probably not the person to ask because I haven't had that much experience with different types of resins and there are a ton of different types. So basically you have stuff from probably a good dozen brands out there. Every single one of the 3D printer manufacturers also makes resin because all the money is in consumables. You know, this is like the Kodak model. You don't make the money on the camera, you make the money on the film. Same thing, you, they make the money on the resin. And so Anycubic, Elegoo, Frozen, Epax, they all have resin. There are also a bunch of startups that also sell resin. There are also a bunch of random companies around the world that also sell resin. And they all have some similar products. So they, you know, there's like, your standard ABS-like resin that comes in a multiple variety of colors. You have gray, you have black, you have white, you have beige, you have, um, I've seen blue out there in places. I've seen brown out there in places. I've seen, I think green, uh, you know, kind of all over the map. You have more like wax-like things. I don't know what they're really used for, but that's the thing. You have clear resins, you have smoked clear resins, you have green, blue, et cetera, clear resins. You have medical grade dental resins, all kinds of different things. And most of them probably aren't that applicable to modeling. Uh, you also have water washable resins, which I've heard people rave about. I tried once and I got this piece of shit out of it. Um, it turned white. It just, you know, like the the bottom here, like, where's that other one? Like, you know, compare the, the bottom of these two. This one is, I mean, it honestly gives me goosebumps. Just like, it's like, it's gross. This one, much cleaner, still not great, but you know, whatever. Water washable, I have not had a good experience with it so far. At the same time, this was still pretty early in my printing learning curve. And so this is what, this is one of the ones where I like baked the base layer to the print, uh, to the print plate, build plate, sorry, and literally had to chisel it off. So that might've colored my experience and I'm planning to give it a try again, but I'm in no real rush. But when I ordered my, uh, my Sonic Mighty, I also ordered a one kilo bottle of Frozen's water washable resin. So I've got that sitting around and it's going to get used at some point. 
But yeah, so far I have not been super impressed. What's the benefit of water washable resin? Basically, you can do the first sort of initial rinse off with water. And from there, you can move into IPA. So that basically means you're not burning through IPA like crazy. You can burn through a little bit of water. Water is cheaper, but it takes longer to evaporate. So disposal is a bit more complicated. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it'd be nice if I could figure out a way to get that stuff to work effectively. So far, it hasn't happened. Uh, in terms of the resins that I use, I've had good luck so far with Elegoo's basic gray resin. I've had good luck with any Cubic's basic gray resin. I haven't been able to get my hands on Frozen's uh, 4K gray resin yet. I can't find it anywhere. Uh, I've started playing around with black, and so far it seems promising, but I honestly only used it to print the platform that the TIE Interceptor sits on, so not a great ask for detail evaluation. Uh, but I have, you know, a good half a bottle of that left, so I'm going to be playing around with that with some other things, and I will report back how it's going. But yeah, basically, I would just start off with a basic gray resin and see how it goes from there. Okay, so that about wraps it up for my discussion of printers and resin. Uh, keep watching. There will be more 3D printing videos dropping kind of here and there as I get to them. And I hope you all are finding this useful and maybe finding this a good way to consider entering or not entering 3D printing as sort of an addition to modeling. Thanks, and catch you later.